Hello and uh, welcome again to our other series of mathematics lessons. We are continuing to look at the topic right angle triangles, which is under the topic or under the concept of measurement and geometry. We have looked at so many aspects on this particular topic on right angle triangles, beginning with the things to do with the Pythagoras theorem, how we can be able to apply Pythagoras theorem to find the unknown sides of a triangle and so forth. We have also been able to use the Pythagoras theorem and the relationship of the triangles to be able to solve, um, to obtain different angles of a triangle by the use of the trigonometric ratios, sine, cosine, and tangent, where we were able to say that given a right angle triangle, this side being the hypotenuse, that is the longer side, this angle being the required angle or, or the angle theta, then this side will be the opposite to this particular angle theta, and because of this being adjacent to it, this side is referred to as the adjacent sides normally um, taken to be in form of A, this is O, and the other side we use H. So if you want to get the sine of theta, we said it's normally given by opposite all over the hypotenuse. That gives us a short, a short form or the acronym, um, so. If you want to get the cosine of the same angle theta, then you take the adjacent side, you divide by the hypotenuse side. This one will give us an acronym CAH or K, where cosine is adjacent all over hypotenuse. Then finally for the turn of theta, it will be given by the opposite side divided by the adjacent side, which will um, give us the acronym TOA. And therefore, if you want to get the tangent of a given angle, then you take the opposite, you divide by its adjacent. Today, we want to proceed and see how this can be applied, the trigonometric ratios in um, several fields. And um, the most applicable field for this trigonometry is in the area of either flying or um, the movement of the ships in the oceans and seas. They do apply a lot of geometry. Then that is what we are going to, to look at this in this particular lesson on how we can be able to use trigonometry to solve different particular problems. There are steps that are normally followed whenever you want to solve a problem using trigonometry way or approach. The first step that should be followed whenever you want to use this approach to solve a, a different phenomenal uh, problems is first you need to draw a diagram and label um, the key information on given data or information. So you have to draw a diagram and label the key information that you have been given. Like in this case, you can be given one of the angles, you can be given one of the side, and because there are those trigonometric ratios that we have learned. We can be able to make them or apply them to solve our problems or given problems. Number two, you identify and draw the appropriate right angle. appropriate 
right triangle for you to be able to solve that kind or that particular problem you must identify and draw a right angle triangle for you to use the trigonometric ratios to solve for either the angle that will be asked or the side that will be asked depending on the diagram that you already have number three you solve using trigonometry And when we are talking about trigonometry, these are the trigonometric ratios, the sine, the cosine, and the tangent of a given angle. To find your missing or the missing to find or identify the measurements of the missing um, measurements. The final step you have now solved and obtain your answer is to now express your answer in words. So this will enable you know whether your statement or your answers are making sense because there are cases where you'll find an answer maybe you are looking for a particular distance and then you find it's maybe negative then that brings in or questions you should question you are working and go back and recheck or sometimes you are using you're working using a right angle triangle then you discover that the hypotenuse which is the the side that you are looking for is either very short than the two shorter sides of a triangle. That tells you that there's a problem and you need to go back and recheck. There are key information or uh, key messages that can be obtained from a mathematical expression whenever you want to solve trigonometry problems. And these are things to do with the angles in question because whenever a person is standing, he can be able to observe an object upward or upside. Then if this person is on top of a building or on top of a cliff or on top of any structure like a cliff, this person can be able to either observe an object up or an object that is down. There are normally angles that are made between the eye of this particular individual and that particular object in question. So those are the two angles that you want to consider this time. Now if Now given that this is the eye of this particular individual we can be able to draw a normal or a straight line called the horizontal line accordance to that particular eye. This particular individual can be able to observe an object up there. So it can be able to draw a straight line from the eye up to that particular object. Now given that this is the horizontal, that is the object, this distance from the object to the ground or to this horizontal line is the one that we refer to as the vertical height of the object. And it normally forms a kind of a right angle triangle. You'll discover that there's an angle made between the eye or between this particular line and the horizontal line. This line is normally referred to as the line, the line of sight. So there's an angle made between the line of sight and the horizontal line. This angle, because it's being measured upwards, 
we normally refer to it as the angle of elevation. So theta therefore becomes angle of elevation. If we had the same same procedures and this person was to look downwards, that is, is on top of a cliff and he observes an object down, that means this will be our cliff and then that will be our object in question. So the same, this will remain to be our horizontal line and all angles are normally measured from the horizontal line. Then this is the line of sight. Again, the angle made between the horizontal line and the angle of sight is, and the line of sight is referred to as the angle of depression. So this theta here will be referred to as angle of depression. This one we said is the angle of elevation. Sometimes it is common for individuals to confuse, to confuse between this particular angle, angle of depression with this particular angle here. This is not an angle of depression. An angle of depression or an angle of, of elevation is the one made between the horizontal line and the line of sight. So again, this will be considered as the distance or the vertical distance from the horizontal line to that particular object. If we had two parallel lines, then we have that hypotenuse being made in uh, such a way. Then we call this line to be our horizontal line, also this one to be the horizontal line because it is lying horizontally. Then you'll discover that this will be the angle of depression while this other one here will be the angle of elevation because you are moving up. Given that this is the angle of elevation and this is the angle of depression, and considering that these two lines are parallel lines, then this one can be taken to be the transversal. And we understand that when a transversal cuts through two parallel lines, then the alternate angles are going to be equal. That means that this particular angle here is going to be equal to this particular angle there. Then what does it mean? That shows or indicates that the angle of depression is the same or equal to the angle of elevation. So we're saying that angle of depression is equal to the angle of elevation. Example. We now want to consider a number of examples on how we can be, use, uh, be able to use trigonometry to solve uh, trigonometry problems. We are told that the angle of elevation of the top of a tower of the top of a tower from a point from a point on level ground Thirty meters away. 
30 meters away from the base from the base of the tower is 28 degrees so that is the angle of elevation of the top of a tower from a point on a level ground which is 30 meters away from the base of a tall tower we are also told to find the height of the tower to find the height of the tower to the nearest meter to the nearest meter after reading this particular question it is important for us to first understand what um, the nature of the question is so we have been told that there is an angle or the angle of elevation of the top of a tower to some point on the level ground which is 30 meters away from the base of a tower is 28 degrees we are supposed um, to find the height of the tower to the nearest meters so in this particular case we can be able to say that this is our tower so let that be our tower and then this is that particular point on top of the tower we are told that 30 meters away from this tower the angle of elevation to the top of this building is observed to be 28 degrees that means the angle of elevation we had said is normally measured between the angle um, i mean the line of sight and the horizontal line therefore this is what we refer to as the angle of elevation and we have been told that it is 28 what 28 degrees now given you see this whatever has been formed after drawing our figure is a right angle triangle in which this is 90 degrees that is the hypotenuse side and this is the adjacent side this will be the opposite side of our right angle triangle but from this particular right uh, from this particular point we are supposed to find the opposite side and that means when you find the opposite side you will have found the height of the tower because this distance here from here up to here represents the height of the tower after drawing that and doubling the important information which we have said we have the angle of elevation and we have the opposite side we have the adjacent we need to move in and now find the height of this particular tower we are going to use a trigonometric relationship that has an opposite and the adjacent adjacent because we have been given and opposite because it is the one that we are looking for and therefore out of the three trigonometric ratios we want to pick the one that has got opposite and adjacent that tells us that we are going to pick what tangent so we're going to use the trigonometric ratios for obtaining the tangent of an angle and the tangent in question will remain to be this angle of elevation therefore we understand that tan of angle theta is normally given by opposite all over the adjacent side and in this particular time the angle in question is 28 degrees is equals to the opposite which we are interested in let us call it h all over the adjacent side which is 30 meters now for us to be able to obtain the value of h we need to multiply both sides by what 30 so that we remain on the right hand side with h and then that will give us the solution of h or the altitude of this particular tower so that will be h is equals to 30 tan 28 degrees when you do that using your calculator tan of 28 degrees is 0 0.5317 when you multiply that by 30 
you'll obtain or you'll get that the height is 15.95128 meters. So this is the answer to this particular question. But always remember to go back uh, to the question and read, read the instructions that you have been given. Like in this particular uh, question, we have been told to leave our answer to the nearest meter. So that means we have to round off 15.95128 meters to the nearest meter. That tells us that our height of this particular tower will be 16 meters because 9 is more than 5 therefore it's possible of affecting the 5 to become 16 and therefore to the nearest meter the height of our building of our tower is 16 meters there are other questions which might require you to calculate the distance between the object and the top of the tower. That means you look for the hypotenuse of this particular figure. Example two, we are told that from the top, of a vertical cliff, from the top of a vertical cliff, a boat, a boat, is spotted, a boat is spotted at sea. If the top of the cliff If the top of the cliff is 42 meters above the sea level and the boat is 90 meters away from the base away from the base of the cliff find the angle of depression to the nearest degree We have here a cliff, and at the top of this cliff, a boat is spotted. The boat, we are told, is 90 meters away from the base of that particular cliff. And the cliff itself is 42 meters above the sea level. We are supposed to find the angle of depression. That means the angle made um, by the horizontal line with the, um, the site or the line of sight to that particular boat. Given that this is the sea or the sea level, it will act as our horizontal line. Then let's have our cliff here. This is our cliff. And then a boat is spotted. And we are told that this boat is a uh, 90 meters away from the foot or the base of the cliff. So given that this is the top of the cliff and that one is our boat, this will be our line of sight. And we have been told that the height of the cliff is 42 meters. 
we are supposed to obtain or find the angle of depression. We say that you must be able to construct or come up with a line or the horizontal line for you to know which angle is the angle of depression. So we say that the angle of depression is made between the horizontal line and the line of sight. Therefore, the angle in question is this angle here. But from our elevation, we discover that the angle of depression is always equal to the angle of elevation. And because this line and this line are parallel, this one acting as a transversal. Therefore, this angle will also be angle theta, or they'll be the same. So this is the angle of elevation being equal to the angle of um, angle of depression. So in this particular case, we can simplify our work by finding the angle of elevation because it will be the same as the angle of um, depression. And therefore, we are going to use a trigonometric ratio that has opposite of an angle and the adjacent of an angle. That tells us that we are going to use tangent trigonometric ratio where tan of an angle theta is normally given by opposite divided by divided by the adjacent or the adjacent side and therefore tan of theta which we are interested with we are interested in getting the angle theta will be given by the opposite of this angle which is 42 meters divided by the adjacent side which is 90 meters that tells us that our angle our tan theta shall be equal to Well, this tells us that our theta shall be equal to the inverse or tan inverse of 42 all over 90. 42 divided by 90, then you obtain the tan inverse will be 25.0 degrees. And the question is guiding us that we should find our angle of depression to the nearest degree. So that means our theta shall be 25 degrees. And that is to the nearest degree. Example 3. A plane. that has been flying at an altitude at an altitude of 1500 meters starts to climb starts to climb at an angle of 15 degrees. At an angle of 15 degrees to the horizontal. When the pilot sees a mountain peak So he says a mountain peak, which is 2,120 meters high. And uh, 2,400 away from him. That means that is the horizontal distance or horizontally. The question here is, will 
the pilot clear the mountain so this is a flight problem that most pilots normally f uh, face whenever they are in the expedition or in the flight expedition so there is a um, pilot here who has been flying at 1500 meter, uh, meters altitude then decides to uh, to climb on 15 on an angle of 15 degrees um, it is respective to the horizontal line. Then immediately he, he sees or observes the peak of a mountain which is 2,120 meters high and is 2,400 meters away from him horizontally. So we are supposed to, um, to find out will the pilot be able to clear the mountain? That is will he be able to achieve a height of more than 2,120 minus the already altitude he or she is flying at 1,500 meters within the sp uh, stipulated uh, time or when he applies the 15 degrees. So we need to come up with a, a diagrammatic representation of this particular information. So we'll take this one to be to be the peak that want to be the peak of our mountain which have been told the mountain itself is 2120 meters high and then our pilot with his plan is um, 2,400 meters away from that particular mountain and he has begun ascending at 15 degrees. So we want to find out, by the time this person will have covered 2,400 meters, will he have cleared the peak of this particular mountain and because already we know the distance from the ground to this particular level ground because we are told that the, the, the pilot was flying at an altitude of 1500 meters therefore the height or the remaining height will be 2120 subtract 1500 which will give us a height of um, 620 meters which need to be cleared by our pilot. So we are going to calculate uh, this particular distance or the op uh, opposite to this particular angle. And because we already know the horizontal distance and we're using the opposite and we have the angle in question, which is in this case is the angle of elevation, we can be able to find this particular distance that will have been achieved by the time he covered 2,500 meters horizontally. So again, we're going to pick on a trigonometric ratio that has adjacent and opposite. That tells us that we must use tangent, and therefore tan 15 degrees shall be equal to, let us call this particular distance x from here to where you will reach by 2,400 meters, which is the opposite x, all over 2,400 meters, which is the adjacent. That tells us that for us to be able to get the value of x, we need to multiply both sets by 2,400. So this will give us 2,400 multiplied by tan of 15 degrees. That will give us 643.0781 meters. So by the time this pilot covers 2,400 meters horizontally, vertically, you will have covered 643, I mean 643 and 0 0.07 
81 meters. And we wanted him to cover 620 meters for him to be able to clear the mountain. So already we'll have covered more by 643 minus 620 by 23 meters. So this distance here above the cliff or above the peak of, the, of this particular hill or mountain shall be 23.1 meters. So that tells us that you'll be able to clear the mountain. And therefore, of course, there'll be no fatalities or accidents. But supposing he had made the calculations and discovered that by the time he covered uh, 2,400 meters, then there's something that needs to be done. He needs to change the angle at which he is climbing. And therefore, you cannot decrease this particular angle. You have to increase it for you to overcome or go over the mountain successfully. So there will be no fatalities or accident because the pilot will be able to, uh, to clear the mountain within the, um, the horizontal length of 2,400 meters. Example 4. The angle of elevation the angle of elevation of the top of a tower from a point on the ground from a point on the ground 40 meters from the base forty meters from the base of a tower is 36 degrees. Find the height of the tower. Find the height of the tower to the nearest meter. So again, this is a trigonometry problem that requires trigonometry solution. We are told that the angle of elevation at the top of a tower from some particular point on the ground is 40 meters, which is 40 meters away from the base of the tower is 36 degrees. We are supposed to find the height of that particular tower. If we take this one to be our tower, then this one is the horizontal line. We are told that from this particular point to the base of the tower is 40 meters. So this will be our line of sight. And that will be our opposite side. And we have been given the measurement of this particular angle as 36 degrees. We are supposed to find the height of this particular tower. So again, we're going to use a trigonometric ratio that has the opposite and adjacent. And that is tangent. So tan of the 36 degrees, which is the angle of elevation that you have been given, will be equal to the opposite, which we do not know, divided by the adjacent, which we have been told is 40 meters. And therefore, for us to get the height of our particular tower, we need to multiply both sides by 40. So the opposite or the height, height of tower, shall be equal to 40 multiplied by tan 36 degrees. That one will give us twenty-eight 
29.0617 meters to four significant figures. The question requires us to write down our answer to the nearest meter and therefore we can approximate it to 29 meters. Therefore the height of our tower is 29 meters. So discover that the questions normally vary. Sometimes can be asked to find the height. Sometimes you'll be asked to find the horizontal distance. Sometimes you'll be asked to find the angle of either elevation or depression. Now this is the angle of elevation, 36 degrees. What if you wanted to get the angle of depression? Then that means from the top of that particular tower, you must first obtain the normal or the horizontal line. Then from the horizontal line to the line of sight is what we refer to the angle of depression and it will still be 36 degrees. Let us consider a final example on how we can be able to use trigonometry to solve problems. We are told, example five, that from a look tower, from a look tower, David spots a bushfire. a bushfire at an angle at an angle of depression which is equivalent to 25 degrees if the look tower If the look tower is 42 meters high, is 42 meters high, how far are we? How far away is the bushfire? Is the bushfire? from the base, from the base of the look tower, again to the nearest meter or we write our answer correct to the nearest meter. So we have been told that there is um, a look tower, look towers are tall structures which are normally erected majorly in the forest for the forest um, guards to be able to take a charge or take control of the activities that are happening within that particular bush. So David, we can be able to say that he's a ranger who is in a bush and discovers that there's a, a bushfire somewhere within the forest and the angle of depression from where he is standing, that is at the top of that particular look tower, is 25 meters, I mean 25 degrees. And we have been told that the height of that particular look tower is 42 meters. We are supposed to find the distance between the base of this particular look tower and that particular bushfire. So if this shall be taken to be our look tower, then this will be the horizontal base and fire has been spotted by David who is at the top of that particular um, look tower. We have been told that the look tower is 42 meters high and the angle of depression which we said is normally made between the no line of normal or the horizontal line and the line of sight was or is 25 degrees. Always you have said that the angle of depression 
and the angle of elevation are always the same, given that there's a transversal cutting through two parallel lines. Therefore, this is going to be 25 degrees. And because we are interested in getting the distance from the foot of this tower to the bushfire, then we need to use a trigonometric ratio that has adjacent and the opposite of that particular angle. Again, that tells us that, that we must use tangent for us to get the adjacent. So tan 25 degrees will be equal to the opposite, which is 42 meters, divided by the adjacent, which we are not aware or we don't know, but we need to find out how far that bushfire is. And that will determine the speed at which David will, uh, will react to that particular bushfire. So that means we multiply both sides by the air. Let air refer to this particular distance. That will be air turn 25 degrees is equals to 42. And therefore, for you to get A, you need to divide both sides by tan 25 degrees. So that will be 42 divided by tan 25 degrees. Tan 25 is 0 0.46. When you divide 42 by your answer, you get that the distance A is 90.06. Nine meters, that is to the nearest three significant figures. But the question requires us to write off our answers to the nearest meter. And that tells us that the distance will be 90, 90 meters. So this one brings us to the end of our discussion on how we can be able to apply trigonometrics to solve trigonometrical problems. And we have said that in most cases, these are problems which arises maybe on sea or by planes when they are flying. So in our, in our next lesson, we are going to wind up this particular topic by looking at the whole aspects of bearings. Thank you.